with the exception of uh, Richard Dawkins' brief uh, intervention yesterday afternoon, I think this is the first time you've heard from a non-US participant. And uh, whilst I uh, found uh, yesterday's deliberations uh, deeply disturbing, viewed from outside the United States, uh, the uh, situation about religion here, its place in society, uh, seems to be, uh, frankly, uh, a, a bizarre aberration. Countries like uh, Britain and Australia, where I've spent most of my life, are in effect post-religious societies, although I'm sure Richard feels that the corpse is still twitching. But nevertheless, for most people, and in most aspects of public life, uh, religion plays a role which is just largely ceremonial, uh, if at all. Um, so uh, I want to move on uh, from uh, what I found was somewhat of a parochial discussion yesterday to, uh, to move the discussion to a different plane. Uh, I'm myself uh, not a religious person in any conventional sense, uh, but I do share something that came up uh, yesterday in the discussion, uh, what we might call Einstein's uh, cosmic religious feeling. Uh, my interest is not so much in uh, the role of religion in society. I mean, I, I follow that with some concern, of course, but, my, but uh, like Richard, uh, my interest is really in the deep nature of reality and what can science tell us about uh, these uh, age-old cosmic mysteries. And in fact, can we demystify the universe uh, using science? So I'd like to uh, talk today about this uh, famous cosmic uh, religious feeling um, is, it, uh, is it just vacuous? Is this just a, a poetic way of talking about a godless world? Or does it have some actual useful content? Uh, I'm going to start, therefore, by making the assumption, there's a little uh, a phrase that I sometimes use, uh, no miracles except the miracle of nature itself. So I'm uh, going to uh, proceed on the assumption that there isn't a cosmic magician uh, there isn't a, a super being who intervenes from time to time in the universe and works miracles. I don't like that idea. Uh, I can't prove it doesn't happen, but I want to proceed on the assumption that it doesn't, that what we're dealing with uh, is a, a magnificent uh, natural system subject to uh, natural laws and ask uh, a deeper level of, uh, of question, uh, such as uh, could the universe have been different? Why are there laws of nature? Where have they come from, and why do they have the form that they do? Why are they mathematical? And uh, above all, one question that seems to get left out of a lot of these discussions, why are these laws comprehensible to human beings? So here the situation is less clear-cut, because although science has advanced uh, tremendously in the last 400 years, many of these questions have been asked for centuries, and they still vex us today. Uh, so. This or that particular discovery in particle physics or cosmology uh, really doesn't uh, get too much to the heart of the matter uh, concerning the questions that I have just outlined. Now, even atheistic scientists, for example, Stephen Weinberg, will wax lyrical about the majesty, harmony, elegance, and sheer ingenuity of the universe. And I'd like to try to convey in the words that I find most uh, uh, congenial this uh, sense of cosmic religious feeling, as Einstein has expressed it. And the best way I can put it is as follows, that uh, as the great cosmic drama unfolds before us, uh, it seems as if there's some sort of script or scheme of things, and of course I'm using these words metaphorically, to which its evolution is conforming. And so we're bound to ask, who or what wrote the script? Or did the script somehow miraculously write itself? Is this great uh, cosmic text or subtext of nature laid down once and for all, or is it uh, perhaps changing with time? Is the universe or its invisible author making it up as it goes along? And is it the only drama being staged, or is our universe just one of many shows in town? That's, of course, using metaphorical language. But I want to dwell on the fact that the universe does conform to an orderly scheme. It's not just an arbitrary muddle of phenomena and events. And that prompts one to wonder, quite apart from whether there's a god or no god, uh, whether there is something like meaning or purpose behind it all. Now, many scientists are quick to pour scorn even on this weaker suggestion. So, for example, Richard Feynman, and I quote, said, the great accumulation of understanding, 
as to how the physical world behaves only convinces one that this behavior has a kind of meaninglessness about it. And that's a, a sentiment echoed in the famous words of Steven Weinberg, the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. And it's interesting to note that Stephen was criticized by some of his colleagues for this remark, not because he denied that the universe had a point, but that he, for the fact that he even suggested it could have a point. So now, can we uh, take words like meaning and purpose, which are, after all, categories devised uh, from human discourse, and project them onto the universe? Well, obviously, we must take care in so doing. Uh, but I'd like to point out that all attempts to describe the universe uh, ultimately stem from human concepts. Science proceeds precisely from taking things from the realm of human discourse and human experience, often practical experience, and projecting them onto nature. And I'll give you a trivial example, which is politically correct uh, to talk about, uh, and that is to say that Newton and Laplace after him described the universe as a gigantic clockwork machine. Uh, now, a machine is, of course, a human construct. And mechanism is a human concept, just as much as purpose. So we have to realize that uh, there's nothing wrong with saying the universe is a machine. Mechanism captures, albeit imperfectly, something of what the universe is about. And the question is, can we use other words that capture other aspects of what the universe is about? Well, can we tease out some common ground here? I think we can. I think. Uh, all scientists would agree that doing science means figuring out what is going on in the world, what the universe is up to, what it's about. If it isn't about anything, you wouldn't be a scientist. There'd be no good reason to embark on the scientific quest in the first place. Because you'd have no rational basis for believing that as you dug to deeper and deeper levels, what you'd uncover would be additional coherent and meaningful facts about the world. Experience shows that as we go deeper and deeper into our inquiry into nature, using scientific methods, we continue to find rational and meaningful order rather than just a haphazard jumble of unrelated phenomena. And scientists proceed on the assumption that there is a coherent scheme of things out there to be uncovered. Now, that's an act of faith. Uh, as Hume long ago pointed out, we have uh, no logical reasons to suppose just because the sun uh, rose today, it's going to rise again tomorrow. But scientists assume that we live in a universe governed by a rational order as enshrined in the laws of nature. And that's an act of faith. It's one that I share. So we might teasingly invert Stephen's aphorism and say that the more the universe seems pointless, the more it also seems incomprehensible. Now. This great cosmic scheme, maybe the words purpose and meaning are too much of a stretch, uh, but there's one word I'd like to try out on you and see where we go, and that's the word ingenuity. The universe does strike me, and I think most scientists, as being astonishingly ingenious in the way it's put together. So can we legitimately describe nature itself as clever or ingenious? Are these qualities intrinsic to nature, or are we simply projecting them onto nature? Could it be we, we, who weave the tapestry of dazzling intellectual subtlety from what is at rock bottom just a banality? Or to put it metaphorically, might nature be a fiendishly clever bit of trickery, the dabblings of a simpleton masquerading as a work of pure genius? I think this gets us to the heart of the matter. Now, we physicists, somewhat arrogantly perhaps, tend to think that the laws of physics are the bedrock of physical reality, the starting point of, of all scientific explanations. I want to ask, where do the laws of physics come from? Why do they have the form that they do? And in particular, why do they have a form that permits the emergence of living organisms and sentient beings like us who can gaze in wonder at the world about them and reflect on the meaning of existence? Where do these laws come from? There's more to it than us being mere observers. Human beings uh, can do more than just watch the show. Through science and mathematics, which are themselves a product of the human intellect uh, and subject, therefore, to the vagaries of biological evolution, but through science and mathematics, uh, they have yielded the key to the universe. 
we've uncovered the hidden mathematical subtext as revealed through the invisible laws of nature. And finding this key to the universe was by no means inevitable. I often wonder that if uh, an asteroid had uh, uh, hit uh, Europe a thousand years ago, uh, whether science uh, as we know it would ever have emerged. So you'd never guess by looking at the world about you that there is this hidden subtext of, subtext of nature, this hidden mathematical order. When Newton saw the apple fall, what he saw was a falling apple. What he deduced was a set of mathematical laws that linked the motion of the apple to the motion of the moon and, and other bodies. So these, this underlying subtext of nature, these laws, are not apparent uh, from daily life. Uh, you have to put in uh, a lot of intellectual effort, but also follow arcane procedures of scientific inquiry to uncover them. So it's an extraordinary thing. We take science for granted, but actually I think we are incredibly privileged to be able to decode nature in this way. The fact that science has uncovered this hidden mathematical order in nature means that we've been made privy to the rules on which the universe runs. How has this come about? How has the universe engineered not just its own self-awareness, but its own comprehension? Mindless, blundering atoms conspiring to make not just life not just mind, but understanding. Beings who are not able to merely watch the show, but to unravel the plot. Well, could it just be a fluke? Might the fact that the deepest level of reality is connected to a quirky natural phenomenon we call the human mind just represent nothing, nothing more than a bizarre and temporary aberration in an absurd and pointless universe? Well, maybe that's the case. But I'm always uncomfortable about shrugging aside what seems to be a very significant, a key fact about the world, that it contains thinking beings able to understand, at least in part, what's going on in nature. It seems like a bit of a cop-out to say, well, it's just a fluke, let's move on and not worry about it anymore. And I have long been fascinated to know whether I can come up or we can come up with a deeper, more rational explanation, something that tries to connect in a, in a more satisfying way um, at our existence as reflective, comprehending beings with a universe that permits such beings to exist. Now, what sort of explanation might that be? 